Lord be with you, beloved Pillar community. I hope you're you're well. So much has been going on. Uh, so much has been shifting. It's almost hard to keep track of it all. The world is still spinning in the midst of a pandemic. The newsreels in our country uh, highlight rising number of cases, rising death toll. The racial injustices continue to occur. The protests and the responses continue to happen. It's an election year. The political conversations are only heating up. The market continues to rise and fall depending on what the headlines say. There's a lot going on. Amidst the swirling realities of the world, it seems good to stay centered. Let's go back to the psalm, <clears throat> the psalm we've been enjoying for four months. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall never be shaken. For my part, in these daily devotionals, I want to invite you to join me on a journey around racial injustice in the church. It's a four-fold process, really. Lament, repent, listen, and respond. Lamenting and repenting will do in our daily acts of prayer and relationship. We've done it on Wednesday nights in Christ in the City through the webinar where we've been engaging Jamar Tisby's The Color of Compromise series. We've lamented on Sunday mornings in worship. Uh, this space is meant to listen. Not so much to me, but to voices, the voices of people of color who are inviting us into a better day. God's heart is that one day people from every language and tribe and nation will all gather around the throne. That's God's heart. God made the world and each person he made in his own image. And one day we're all going to worship Jesus. We're all going to bend the knee. That's what Paul says at the name of Jesus. Every knee will bend and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So how do we wait, as the psalmist invites, how do we wait actively? How do we wait in participation, not just idly, one day, finally, God will make it all better. How do we get in on what God's doing, what God will do, what God wants done? Albert Tate, in a letter compiled, among other letters, in a book titled Letters to a Birmingham Jail, written in honor of Martin Luther King Jr., offers some pretty provocative words that I, I've personally taken to heart. Albert Tate's an African-American pastor out in California. Uh, li listen to what he says, and if the Spirit inspires, maybe you can pursue it in your, in your life. Listen to this. Let's not forget that the transformation of our churches begins in our living rooms. In the same way in which we value and seek diversity around the staff table, we must also recognize the unequivocal importance of diversity around the dinner table. You cannot expect a change to take shape on Sunday morning that has not begun in your home. He ends his letter like this. Guess who's coming to church? Is the question. Ultimately, the answer lies in how you respond to this question. Guess who's coming to dinner? The realities of racism and racial injustice are far more complicated than who's around your dinner table, but it's also not other than that. So maybe, as we wait with the psalmist for God alone, my soul waits, as we wait actively, as we wait in participation, I wonder if we could consider who's coming over for dinner. The peace of the Lord Christ be with you, my friends.